Yes, I wanted to review some of the questions from the homework for this past homework just to make sure that everybody's understanding some of the key concepts. Um, and so um, I'm just going to scroll through some of the questions that I had and make a comment. Um, so Spearman often is used when you have smaller sample sizes or you have ordinal data. Um, for the Pearson question, I was making sure that you gave me two ER variables um, and then what you had said makes sense. Um, so remember, positive correlation is also called direct and a negative correlation is also called an indirect correlation. Um, for this one with this matrix, um, this is nice review in that you're seeing relationships between two variables, two ER variables for a Pearson. Um, so you can see anytime you see stars, um, that usually indicates their significance. So there are five significant correlations in this graph. And the strongest one being sleep and well-being. The more sleep you got in terms of sleep quality, this was a sleep quality one, um, you, the higher well-being scores you had. Again, correlation is not causation. You're just seeing this pattern, both increase, both decrease. Um, for the coefficient of determination, which is R squared, you would take that 0.57 times that 0.57. When you go to interpret it, you're going to interpret it as shared variance. So the variability that's going on in sleep and the variability that's going on in well-being is shared. Um, that percent shared. That's how you interpret a coefficient of determination or R squared. Um, for this guy, I got lots of the same graph um, versus people doing it, or I don't know if it was something that was done in class and then people did the same things, but um, it was interesting and disappointing to see the exact same graph come from so many people. Um, so I won't be having you go to this website, but you might on the final exam see the similar output. So I hope that you're able to make a reasonable conclusions um, with the given information. Um, some mistakes people made was interpreting the coefficient of determination. So it took that 0.81 in this example and squared it. It's 65%. So you could talk about it in shared variance, but it really is the variance in X predicting Y. So with a regression, since we're able to make predictions, it's the variance in X predicting Y. All right, um, so that's how you interpret the R squared. Um, the next couple questions, um, I saw some mistakes. Um, and so for this, if you've got this example, it is appropriate to run a chi-square because you have two variables that are nominal that are dealing with counts or frequencies. So the chi-square test of independence is looking at how two things are related. A null hypothesis would say they're independent and your research hypothesis is saying they're dependent or they're related. Um, so we're looking at, if you had a significant chi-square, you would have P less than 0.05. If you have a P less than 0.05, that means there is a relationship going on between the flavors kids pick and the flavors adults pick. Um, and sometimes it's useful to like see that graph to see where those patterns are. A chi-square, if it's significant, it's because there is a bigger difference between the observed and the expected. That's basically what a chi-square formula is. Um, so a chi-square does not interpret population, compare population means it's looking for relationships. Some things you would need is nominal data, um, that you're interested in comparing with counts. To run a chi-square, you do need more than five individuals in that particular count as one of those assumptions. This one, um, all of these are great. All of these you could run a chi-square. They have different two variables that both have counts. All right, so counts on what type of coffee they prefer, counts on the major, counts on your social, what type of social medias you're using, um, and then counts on gender. Um, same thing with study habits uh, and then counts. So all of these things are getting counts. What might have thrown people off with the hours spent daily, 
Um, that would be like you, you're given categories and you kind of choose one that's ordinal, could be ordinal data, but still would fit into those categorical um, for a chi-square test of independence. So I hope this was helpful. And um, again, I'll have office hours before the final exam. I'll be in my office if you've got any additional questions. Great week.